please subscribe to our channel, Pacific Front Untold, and be sure to leave a comment after watching a video. During the Second World War, the Imperial Japanese Army deployed millions of soldiers throughout the Pacific Theater, and while they were initially successful during 1941 and 1942 against Allied forces, as the war ground on, the Japanese Army suffered massive casualties that were catastrophic in the face of Allied numerical superiority. Like most prolonged conflicts, the exact number of Japanese soldiers who died in the Pacific Theater is difficult to determine. Death tolls are estimates that vary depending on who is reporting the data. However, examining the estimates of Japanese military deaths is crucial because it enables a more complex and nuanced view of Imperial Japan as more than simply an aggressor. From an American point of view, the U.S. entrance into the Pacific War on December 7, 1941, is often used as the start date to estimate Japanese military casualties. However, before Pearl Harbor and the American entrance into World War II, Japan was already fighting in China and in other Southeast Asian countries for territorial gains and to capture natural resources such as oil. Therefore, it is more appropriate when considering war Japanese casualties to include deaths prior to Pearl Harbor. This would cover those suffered during its campaign in China, which began in 1937, and significantly increases the overall estimate of Japanese deaths in the Pacific theater. It is understandable that the exact number of Japanese casualties who died during the Pacific theater after Pearl Harbor is debated by historians. Estimates range from 2.6 to 3.1 million men killed or injured, with total combatant deaths estimated at 2.1 million. Conservative estimates place non-combatant deaths for civilians at nearly half a million people, while more liberal estimates cite 1 million civilians or more. The majority of the 2.1 million Imperial Japanese soldiers who died lost their lives in what could be considered as traditional combat operations on land, sea, and air. However, American descriptions of Pacific theater battles often include unique aspects of Japan's military operations, such as bonsai charges and kamikaze pilots, who believed in an honorable death and used suicidal heroism to inflict severe damage on their enemies when such attacks were successful. However, it is estimated that kamikaze pilots specifically only made up about 3,800 Japanese deaths overall. This is only a very small number of the total Japanese combat deaths and not the driving force behind Japanese-inflicted casualties against American forces in the Pacific. Of course, the Japanese lost lives in every battle in the Pacific, but one of the deadliest campaigns was the Battle of Okinawa, which began on April 1, 1945. The U.S. was advancing in its island-hopping campaign to reach the Japanese home islands and capturing Okinawa as a staging point for B-29 bombers and other forces was a key stepping stone in their strategy. The Japanese were equally, if not more, desperate to prevent an invasion of Japan. During the brutal two-month battle over the tiny island, over 100,000 Japanese soldiers were killed or wounded, while the American death toll from the battle was only 12,500 killed or missing, a significantly smaller number by comparison. As the Japanese were forced more and more onto the defensive, its civilians were not spared from the devastating effects of Allied air attacks. Specifically, the Japanese home front suffered tremendously from firebombing. In a bid to demoralize Japan and force it to surrender, entire cities were razed to the ground. The first air raid on Japan was the Doolittle Raid in April 1942, a retaliatory raid after Pearl Harbor that killed several citizens. As U.S. air power came within range of the Japanese home islands, the frequency and severity of the bombings increased as the war went on. In total, U.S. Army air forces in the form of Boeing B-29 superfortresses targeted 66 Japanese cities, due specifically to their high population density and mostly wooden infrastructure. The deadliest of these fire bombings were the Tokyo bombings of March 9 and 10, 1945. During this infamous firebombing, an estimated 100,000 civilians were killed, which was a greater loss of life 
than either of the atomic bombs that would come later. Not only were the deaths caused by the initial bomb blasts, but also from the ensuing fires. Much like the German city of Dresden, the fires ravaged Tokyo and its citizens, and thousands died due to the blistering heat and flames, oxygen starvation, and by being trampled to death as terrified masses of people tried to escape the inferno. While the firebombing of Tokyo inflicted a staggering number of civilian casualties and completely burned entire sections of the city to the ground, the worst was yet to come. Possibly the most well-known bombing attacks of the Pacific Theater, and the ones that caused the most civilian suffering, were the atomic attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. On August 6, 1945, the B-29 Enola Gay dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, resulting in 200,000 deaths. Nagasaki was bombed three days later on August 9th, killing another 74,000 people. In both cities, immediately after detonation, nearly 50% of those within a three-quarter of a mile radius died from the blast. The effects of these nuclear weapons continued to take lives weeks, months, and years after they were deployed due to radiation sickness, severe burns, and other resulting injuries. The dropping of the atomic bombs ultimately led to Japan's surrender and the end of the war in the Pacific. Because Japan was the aggressor in World War II and lost, it is common for them to be vilified and their military and civilian deaths minimized or overlooked as a result. In doing so, however, it erases the millions of Japanese civilian lives that were lost, regardless of whether they supported the war effort or not. To best understand the history of the Pacific War, it is important to discuss the death tolls that were inflicted by both sides and how those events impacted both U.S. and Japanese post-war thinking about the use of nuclear weapons and other methods of warfare that created such significant human suffering and death. <laughs>